Super Rugby Final, folks. It all comes down to this. Chiefs first up against Crusaders second down in Hamilton. How's this going to go? We are going to go through some squads, some prediction stats, and you guys can let us know your thoughts on what you reckon is going to happen. But like I mentioned, first against second, it's kind of the matchup that on paper throughout the course of the season you thought that should be the final. So it's kind of fitting that it's these two teams because they've looked a cut above the rest for pretty much the entire season. The Chiefs went 13-1, and easily the best-placed team uh, throughout the season. Although, with their knockout matches against the Reds and the Brumbies, They've kind of had arm wrestles both times. They've not just been able to kind of mop the floor with either of those Aussie sides, 29-20 uh, and then 19-6. Uh, yeah, so really made to work for them, really proper finals matches. Whereas the Crusaders, 10-4, their record is not quite as flash as the Chiefs, but geez, they are coming into some devastating form at the right time of the season. They blew the Drew away 49-8, which was kind of to be expected. And then the Blues, 52-15 was like nobody saw that coming in terms of the margin. Like the Crusaders were certainly big time favorites, but that margin, unbelievable. So it should be a pretty interesting final, man. I am uh, very much looking forward to it. For the Chiefs, they have kept things remarkably stable. And why wouldn't you? Like you're, you're a team which has just made a final. You don't go and make wholesale changes unless you need to. Uh, Ross, Tokiaho, and Dyer, that's your front row. They will need to be strong up front, absolutely, because the Crusaders set piece. It's always going to be one of the biggest tests of the year. Um, but I think the Chiefs have done pretty well against the Crusaders in that department in the previous two games they have played from memory. And Tokiaho, like in terms of forwards who carry the ball, like most defenders beaten of any forward uh, in the competition. So he is an absolutely devastating ball carrier. You need to look out for him. But Retallick and Vai in the second row, you would say they're going to need to be good at line-out time. If you start losing line-out ball, uh, you make your job a lot harder. Just ask the Blues uh, last week. Soakula is promoted from the bench to a starting role at 6 this week. He swaps places with Fino and then Kane and Jacobson at 7 and 8. I mean, I've gone on about it for weeks and weeks, but man, Kane and Jacobson are just getting through millions of tackles. Well, the Crusaders got a, a big-time tackler as well, but the duo of Kane and Jacobson are proving uh, yeah, pretty bloody effective in Super Rugby this year. Brad Webber and DMAC, that's a pretty attacking-minded 9-10 combo, as we have kind of come to expect. I mean, DMAC has got the most points of any 10 or any player in uh, Super Rugby this year, and uh, that's for a good reason. And um, you would say his attacking game, ball in hand, it's pretty sharp. He's maybe not quite as devastating as Moonga if you're looking at the pure kind of attacking numbers, but he's um, he's the second-place guy behind Moonga, so... It's, uh, I mean, on paper, that could make for a bloody exciting game with the two most kind of attacking-minded 10s in the competition going at it. But in a final, you kind of expect more of an arm wrestle. Uh, ALB and Nankaval, that's your 12-13 combo. Uh, Nankaval, I think, had a real field day against the Crusaders way back in round one. But that's a long time ago now. Uh, the back three, though, for the Chiefs has just been on absolute fire all year. Nana has made the All Blacks on the back of some really good carries and defensive work. Nana Satura on that left wing is maybe the kind of unsung hero, and he's been very, very uh, consistently good as well. But then Stevenson, the guy who's been potentially a little bit undersold by the All Blacks selectors, only selecting him as injury cover for Mark Talia, 11 tries, 7 try assists, and 20 clean breaks. Like, 20 clean breaks is the top player of anybody who's left. Like, of the Crusaders and Chiefs players, he's the top. I think he's like third overall behind Talia and somebody else. So, Stevenson, very, very dangerous from the back. And the, the Chiefs pack overall, man, they just, um, they, they look like a good team. So you don't go that kind of record unless you look pretty bloody good. Uh, Bench-wise, Thompson, Norris, and Ryan. That's the same. same. Akoi and Fino, like I mentioned, Fino is the only change to the, the bench from last week. Ratsima, Iwane, and uh, Paul Hippie uh, round out the kind of back replacements. So it's still 5-3 on the bench in terms of backs and forwards. But yes, very stable for the Chiefs at home. For the Crusaders, also, also very stable. And man, like... Some bloody weapons. The one guy they've brought back is one of their best players of all time, but we'll get to him in a second. To Mighty Williams, Cody Taylor, and Oli Jaeger. That's your front row, and Taylor has been getting up the try scoring charts himself this year. Uh, just ask the Blues from last week. They had a wee bit of trouble uh, with the Crusaders at times. And then second row, Scott Barrett and Sam Whitelock. Sam Whitelock, there was a bit of talk that he may never play for the Crusaders again if he's 
kind of recent injury kept him out and I will be interested to see if there's any late changes to the Crusaders squad but it would be fitting for him uh, to play his last game for the Crusaders in a final and remember there's a lot of guys in both these teams who are potentially running out for the final time uh, for their club so yeah they'll both sides be wanting to go out on a high uh, the back row for the Crusaders Sione Havili, Tom Christie and Christian Leo Willie like I mentioned it last week against the Blues like not the bigger name guys like, not kind of chock full of all black caps, but geez, they're good. I mean, you're looking at Tom Christie's stats, the top tackler in the competition. Just loves a tackle. And then Leo Willie, I think, is the Crusaders' top ball carrier. So, yeah, man, like, just quietly very, very, very good. Like, you don't make it into a Super Rugby final, and especially knock out your quarterfinal and semifinal opponents by that kind of margin, unless your forwards are fronting up. So, credit to those uh, Crusaders' Lucies. Uh, Drummond and Moonga, that's your 19 combo. I mentioned Moonga. Like with his ball carrying, he's just so dangerous. 60 defenders beaten is fourth overall in the entire competition. Like the top guys for defenders beaten are generally not tens. But Moonga is, um, yeah, he is something else. So look out for him as always. Good Hugh and Enor, <clears throat> 12 and 13. Like Enor played so well last week. It pains me to say it, but like, I've always thought, and I will admit that I was wrong this time, uh, Enor, I always thought, he's kind of bang average, isn't he? But he plays for a good team. I like his versatility. He can cover so much in his back line. I thought he's kind of bang average player, but in a good team, kind of elevates him. Like, makes him look better, but man, he was one of the best players on the field last week. So you don't get that kind of performance level by accident. So I put my hand up and say, man, he was very good. Shut me up for sure. I can just go back to my little blues hovel and um, watch some rugby in quiet. But uh, yeah. And then Fai Galuku, top try, try scorer in the competition, 13 tries. He's on the left wing. Dallas McLeod, newly selected All Black on the right. And then Will Jordan. Like, everyone expects kind of miracles from Will Jordan, but he's played seven games since coming back from that kind of ear problem. And uh, six try assists and three tries in seven games is insane. So that guy is an absolute weapon as well. Uh, replacements, Bell comes into the 23. Sykes, Martin, and O'Neill as your front row replacements. Quentin Strange drops to the bench to make way for Sam Whitelock. Dom Gardner, Willie Hines, Fergus Burke, and Chad, Fih Chad Fihaki, Chad Fihaki uh, round out the rest of the bench. Stats-wise, head-to-head, who's got more tries? It's the Crusaders by 10, 78 to 68. But you feel like... The Crusaders racked up a lot of them recently, whereas the, the Chiefs kind of had more kind of arm wrestle games, less racking up the try numbers. Uh, the Chiefs, though, have got more of the kind of razzle-dazzle stuff, as Justin Marshall would say. Uh, second overall for clean breaks with 119 across all their games, whereas the Crusaders are at 98. Most defenders beaten, whereas the Crusaders are fourth for defenders beaten. So, yeah, the, the Chiefs' flashy stuff is certainly ranking higher than the Crusaders, but also... Their tackling numbers are better, like 89.5%, best in the comp. So this Chiefs side can score some tries, but they can also strangle teams with their just ferocious defense, whereas the Crusaders, they're fourth for the tackling rate, which is solid without being kind of in the medals. But the Crusaders have got a better line out, 86.5%, uh, they're in fourth, whereas the Chiefs are way down in ninth. It's only a couple of percent between them, but still... A couple of percent can be the difference between lifting a trophy and not. And the Chiefs discipline, 10 yellow cards to the Crusaders, 5. So, yeah, man, you feel like more ruck, I mean, just set piece. The line out for the Chiefs is going to be so important up against the Crusaders, who do come into this one on absolute fire. Now, the head-to-head -head record is the Chiefs this year, because they won both games. Round 1, 31-10. That was the razzle-dazzle of the Chiefs. It was Nankabil, and it was uh, Shooter Stevenson carving up the Crusaders, and then round 10, 34, 24 to the Chiefs in Hamilton. More of a defensive shift from the Chiefs, a heap of tackles. So they've won both ways, the Chiefs, but then both their recent games, real kind of tooth and nail arm wrestles, whereas the Crusaders have just mopped the floor. So you could argue the Crusaders are in better form than the Chiefs going into the final, but then again, you could also argue that um, the Crusaders have had a couple of easy games. I don't know, they made them look easy, but if the Chiefs put up a fight, maybe that'll um, stunt the Crusaders. I wouldn't have thought so, man. This Crusaders team knows how to win playoff matches, finals, so mentally you feel like that's a pretty massive advantage. Uh, Predictions-wise, the uh, the bookies have got the sides pretty much at evens, with the Chiefs being like half a point favorite, so very, very even. And then uh, the rugby forecast algorithm says the Crusaders by one, so there's nothing in it for this final. It's predicted to be... 
a bit of a grandstanding one. Remember, the Crusaders got an extra day's rest, having played on a Friday, whereas the Chiefs played on Saturday, but the Chiefs are at home. So, yeah, man, there's a lot to like about this game. It's in Hamilton. It's a sellout. Obviously, it's a 7.05 local kickoff. So, um, kind of early, well, not early evening, mid-evening. Is that mid-evening? For some countries, that would be counted as early evening. Um, kickoff for you guys in Australia, that'll be definitely early evening. And then morning for you guys in much of the rest of the world. Ben O'Keefe is the ref. Let's hope he doesn't have any too dramatic influence on the game. For you guys in the States, it's on Floor Rugby. I think they've got the Rugby Championship listed on their schedule as well. So if you want to sign up for them, you can watch this game. And then some more rugby later on in the year. And then uh, if you're bored between now and the final, you can go watch Two Cents on Tour. That's a second Two Cents Rugby channel, except it's not rugby. It's me walking around China with a camera talking to people in Chinese and going to some hopefully interesting places. Like the other day, it was all flooded. Not real bad flooding, but surface level flooding and me complaining about drainage and stuff. Check it out. There's a card up there. you got plenty of time between now and the final. But yeah, you guys let us know your thoughts. And um, yeah, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.